Happy Thursday to everyone. So thankful for your joining us on these uh, Trinity Connection videos. And again, we hope they're a help. Uh, that's all we really uh, want to do with these is just be a help and encouragement uh, to everyone. And uh, today's devotional, we're going to get into the devotional first, is from 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And uh, we oftentimes turn to 1 Corinthians chapter number 11 when we're talking about the Lord's Supper or communion service. And certainly this is kind of the time of year when our church observes communion. We observe the Lord's Supper uh, on uh, the Easter uh, Sunday or that Easter weekend. And uh, so I wanted to take us back to this passage of scripture and just kind of talk through some of that as we think toward communion and the Lord's Supper and certainly the Easter uh, time of year that we find ourselves in. So I'm gonna read 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. And just a few verses, verses 23 down through verse number 26. And here's what Paul writes, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty-three: 23. For I have received of the Lord that which I also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Then I love what verse number 26 says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Now again, normally we are observing the Lord's Supper. We'll be doing that uh, or would have been doing that this coming Sunday. And uh we will be doing that when we gather back together again. Uh, I know different uh, churches are doing it in different ways. And uh, certainly for our church, that's really uh, our concern is, is what our church is doing. And so we're going to uh, wait until we're all able to come together uh, again physically uh, so that we can partake in the Lord's Supper together. Looking forward to that time. But uh, I just I didn't want to miss the opportunity to just kind of speak toward these things because it does. It speaks of certainly the Lord's uh, broken body and his shed blood, what those things mean for us. And what we need to remember is that those things, that this Lord's Supper time is, uh, first of all, a remembrance of what the Lord has done for us, uh, his broken body, his shed blood. We, we remember those things in the, the elements of the uh, unleavened bread and the unfermented grape juice. But then the other side of that is there's some self-examination that goes along with that. And that's why this is given to the local churches. It's a self-examination time for the folks in that church to uh, just bring their hearts and minds to what the Lord has done, that sacrifice that he has made for us, and then ask ourselves, are we right with the Lord? Are we partaking of these in the wording that Paul used? Are we partaking worthily of these things? Are we being the, is, does our life have these elements uh, in it per se? In other words, I don't want to be wrong with the Lord and partake of the Lord's Supper when the very thing that he has done in providing in his shed blood and his broken body is to forgive my sin, to wash all of those things away. And so it's a wonderful time of self-examination and it's a, a time of remembrance, but I want to just give us verse number 26 and, and remind all of us, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Again, we are showing the Lord's death, but it's till he come. In other words, he, he's not present in the elements, as some might believe. He's, he's not uh, uh, present in those, those, uh, that wafer or, or that uh, little bit of grape juice. No, no. He is in heaven currently preparing a place for us. He said that in John chapter 14. And Paul reiterates that same idea. Uh, you're showing the Lord's death. You're remembering that time until he does come back. And uh, again, that to me speaks of the resurrection. He's not in that tomb. He has risen again. And then he's coming back for us one day soon. We look forward to that, certainly. But as we think toward the Lord's Supper and think toward Easter and all of those things, and really a daily reminder of what the Lord has done for us ought to be a part of our, our daily lives. Boy, we're remembering all of his sacrifice until he does come back for us. Looking forward to that day. I trust you are as well. A couple of, uh, well, just one prayer request that I failed to mention last night. I, I, I feel bad. I forgot about Brother Travis Lee, who has been, um, he fell last week. He went into the hospital 
And then now he's out of the hospital, but he is in Austin RNC, which is a, a rehab and, and retirement nursing uh, facility. So he's uh, getting better, but uh, because of the, all the virus and the, the quarantines and things, they're not allowing any visitors. So I sent him a letter uh, last week, and I appreciate Brother Matt Johnson uh, finding out about that and, and finally getting in touch, uh, at least uh, finding where he was. But he is in Austin RNC, that is on Burnett Lane, and he's in room 116A. And so if you uh, wanna look up the address, uh, if you need to, we can uh, supply that for you. But he's in, in room 116A, and I, I was in contact with him, I wrote him a letter or a little note and just said we had been praying for him and, and those things. So if you would add Brother Travis to your prayer list, I know he appreciates that very much. Please be praying for the weekend services as they are, of course, upcoming and not just ours, but a lot of churches just like ours around the country and around the world are preparing for Easter like <laughs> has never happened before. And so we just wanna pray that the Lord uh, certainly would, he is gonna show up, um, but are we, are we doing what we can to try to facilitate uh, him moving in, in hearts and lives? And, and I don't mean working up something uh, spectacular or some kind of you know, fog and light show. I'm just saying, are we preparing our hearts and then are we asking others or are we speaking to others or are we witnessing to others so the Lord might use that testimony in their life? Let's be praying for the weekend services. And then don't forget, uh, we're gonna try to get together on Saturday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. I think once in the video last night or in the service last night, I mentioned Sunday, my mistake, it happens. In fact, it happens about every time we record one of these things, but it is Saturday from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. And if everybody shows up, we've got just a little gift for them to, to take back with, with you all. But uh, we're gonna try to stay in our cars. And of course, facilities won't be open or, or be able to be used. Um, but we, if you'd like to see some other folks and maybe roll down a window, park a little ways away and, and roll down a window and talk for a little bit, that's what we wanna do. And so if you'd like to participate in that, uh, you're welcome between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. on this coming Saturday, that's the 11th of April. And then if you don't feel comfortable doing that, no problem at all. We're not taking roll, we're not keeping track, we're just uh, wanting to facilitate as best we can a central place where folks can meet and just see one another. And so we hope to see you then if you're able to. All right, I'll let you go. Uh, stay safe, a storm is coming, uh, seems like on a Thursday afternoon here. So uh, stay safe and uh, we're praying for you, we love you, we miss you, and we'll see you again tomorrow.